Okay, so that's the tan. And I can give you a close-up. That's 25 grams of tan, which is a large excess compared to the Mali pentachloride. And all we're shooting for is the largest amount we can get in the Erlenmeyer and still stir it. So, 25 grams is fine, as would be more, or even a little less. So the only key thing is the stir bar needs to be large enough to actually disturb the tin, and not just to get a... What size Erlenmeyer flask are you using there, John? It's a 250 milliliter flask. And this is diethyl ether. So 200 mils of this. to weigh out the other denim pentachloride, which we obtain from Strim chemicals. Is Mike Strim going to be giving us a... Uh... <laughs> and we're going to want to weigh out between 10 and 14 grams. Quantity for this prep isn't not important since we're just using a large excess of tin anyway. John, maybe you could say a few words about the history of this starting material. Pre preparatory procedure? Well, this is 5.2 grams. The prep was, uh, that we're using was published by Ronaldo Pauli in the 1990s. And the uh, first preparation of this material probably dates back to the 60s. Yeah. Of course, Fran Stevens had a, a modification of this prep in the appendix to her thesis. Okay, so, 4.7, so. Just shy of 10 grams here. And the addition, we just want to add it slowly and uh, I guess the last few times I've done it, I've actually done it in a round bottom. I thought we'd get better colors with an Erlenmeyer if it works just as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the black molly pentachloride dissolves and gets solvated, so we get the uh, etherate. And then the tin will reduce that to the tetrachloral is etherate. And uh, that will be an orange precipitate that we'll deal with tomorrow. And this prep is usually done in about three to four hours but I find it's convenient to just stir it overnight and make sure that it's absolutely ground to completion. I use this file to run out my stuff. I'm going to add about two grams. This is part of an undergraduate lab at MIT, which was previously taught under the course name 533. 
I don't know what the new course name is. Do you? Well, it's part of our whole new set of Eureka modules. Just if I had it this way, you can see it. It's 2.7, so this will be about 12 and a half grams. How Mom much have you added already? I think about half, so it's 2.7. that one could make here is if you dump it in all at once, sometimes the prick uh, takes on an interesting green color. So I just try not to add it all at once. And of course, molypentachloride will react THF, which is why this first step of the reduction is done in a solvent that is not prone to polymerization. John, can you say a few words about the glove box inside which you're doing this synthesis? And this is a nitrogen filled glove box. this for the first hour or so because sometimes there's a tendency for gases to be evolved in this first step and we don't want the septum to pop off too violently and before we leave this over stirring overnight since I assume the camera only be here for so long uh, we will want to fold it down we're stirring overnight so we don't fill the inside of the glove box with diethyl ether. But for now, we're just going to leave it loosely capped because if it's tightly capped, the pressure does build, more of it builds, and you hear a loud explosion in the room next door. Well, we definitely don't want to have that happen. And usually, there's no overflow, but the septum ends up in interesting places around the glove box. So the only really key thing is to make sure it stirs and it can alternatively the same prep can be done in this 300 milliliter round bottom flask and uh, using the same quantities of reagents. Okay. Can you give us a preview of what to expect for the isolation of the product? Well, you know, tomorrow morning we're going to uh, stop the stirring and allow the orange molybdenum tetrachloride, this diethylethrate, to settle. We'll decant off the diethylether and add THF, which is in this much larger bottle in this box. And, uh, the second reduction step from molybdenum 4 to molybdenum 3 takes about three hours. And after that time, we're just going to filter the suspension 
in such a manner that the tin, which is heaviest, stays at the bottom of the flask and we'll wash the isolated salmon orange powder until it appears salmon orange <laughs> as it usually looks a little bit purplish or blue when it's initially isolated. Okay, John, very good. So that's it for now then. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you'd like, you can get a, a shot of the this is a, a Unix box now. If you notice that, that it's run, it's powered by FreeBSD. Okay, that's great. Uh, just for clarification purposes, this box is not computerized. It's an old box <laughs> and has no integrated computer at all. It's just mechanical.